the serology test is what if people are going to do tests locally it's likely to be what they're going to get results on more rapidly and, and those tests can be ne negative obviously from some of the results we have or if they're positive patients may relax their guard and and assume because they're um vaccinated that they're protected and, and one of the important aspects of all of the work that you've heard described is is to actually understand uh, whether patients are protected and whether they really should be dropping stopping shielding of course as shielding officially ends the end of march it's creating a big challenge for our patients i think and um uh in my opinion certainly for many of our patients is that, that they should not uh, be dropping the guard at this point when there's still a fair uh, a reasonable amount of the virus around in, in the community and we don't know how protected they are even if they've had the vaccination so i think it's very clear that the vaccinations are safe and so there's no we have no anyone's got the anxiety about the safety of the vaccines uh and, you, and our patients should have them and most of them have had them uh but until we get more information or until the rates of the virus have gone much lower we shouldn't be dropping our guard do we even know which cells confer the most protection against COVID? Is it antibodies? Is it Tay cells? Do we know that? And, and you know, actually, how much meaning can we take from antibody, antibody tests? Um, there are sort of three components of the immune response. And there's a bit that nobody really talks about called innate immunity, which is the immune response that happens within the first six hours of the virus entering your body. And it happens within cells. And it... Um, a whole load of genes get switched on inside the cells that make them try to reject the virus, you know, and make them difficult, uh, makes it difficult for the virus to pass from one cell to another. And um, generally speaking, innate immunity is um, in most of our patients with blood cancers and lymphomas and are on, on treatments, we would expect their innate immunity to be similar not maybe not exactly the same, but quite similar to um, healthy um, other healthy individuals in the country. But what is different is that many people, as both the Peets, both the Peters, both the Peets have said earlier, either have abnormal B cells, which are the cells in the body that produce antibodies, because of a lymphoma, or because the treatment they've received or are receiving is designed to kill off their B cells because some of those B cells are malignant. Um, so many patients don't make an antibody response and antibodies are sort of proteins that circulate in your blood and they stick on to viruses and they help the other cells of the immune system actually kind of eat them up and destroy the virus. So that's one part of the immune response. And that's the one that most people talk about because it's quite easy to measure antibodies in the blood. But the other really important part of the immune system is your T lymphocytes or your T cells. And we used to call these killer cells or cytotoxic cells. And these are really smart cells in your immune system that can actually almost see inside other cells in the body and they can see if they've got virus inside them and they can actually kill the cells. And what we know from other viruses is actually the best immune response is one where you make antibodies and you have a group of T cells that are able to recognize an infected cell and kill it. And we, we are beginning to understand that patients who don't make antibodies because of the treatment they're on or if they don't have an or they don't have B cells may still actually be able to make T cell responses that can protect them and eradicate the virus but it may take longer for that to happen so the virus may persist in them for longer and the only other thing I would say which I think um, in response to a previous um, question from someone Rachel about the different types of antibody tests um, basically, if you receive any one of the vaccines that are currently being given in the UK at the moment, they, um, they basically um, dupe your body into thinking it's been infected by the virus and they um, deliver a bit of the 
COVID virus that's called the S protein or the spike protein, and it can be delivered in different ways. But that's and and the antibodies you make in response to the vaccine are antibodies that are very specifically recognized and stick onto the spike protein. So they're called anti S antibodies. But actually, the early um, antibody tests that were developed and used in hospitals to see whether you had actually had an infection are generated against the nuclear protein of the virus. So they're called N antibodies. So if you do choose to, and we can discuss this later, whether we think it's worth it, if you do choose to get an antibody test, if you want to see your response to the vaccine, you need to make sure you're being tested with an S antibody test and not an N antibody test, because that will tell you if you've been infected with the actual virus itself. Please remember that antibodies aren't the only measure of how protected you are against coronavirus. There are other things that are really important. Your immune, your immune system is made up of a whole army of cells who are really incredible and ink dricker and and are all involved in fighting fighting the virus so if you get um an antibody test and you have antibodies brilliant but that's not necessarily something that tells you you should change your behavior if you get an antibody test and you don't have antibodies don't panic because there might be other cells um that will be giving you protection